When you had the 75 girls, did you sleep with everyone? No, I couldn't. There's too many. There's no way. So I wasn't sleeping with most of them. I say up to 75, I was probably still only sleeping with five or six. I tried to go like very legit businessman with it and not sleep with the girls, et cetera. But that's when I learned my lessons, right? I learned so many lessons from that period of my life about male, female dynamics. So many lessons. And I learned that women are loyal to the dick they want to suck and nothing else. And if they're not having sex with you, they're going to sex with somebody else. They're not going to go sexless. And whoever they're having sex with is the person they're going to listen to ultimately. And that person does not want them in naked in another dude's house. Why would they? Right? So I was trying to motivate girls with money. So the girls who loved me and worked for me, my main girlfriends, they'd get probably around 20% of their money. I'd keep 80% of the money they made. So they basically worked for free. They worked for my love and attention. The other girls was the other way around. I'd keep 20% for all the help I gave them, the premises, the typing. Cause I, by that time I had a, a room of typers. I had like four or five girls who were full-time professional typers. They were ugly, but they were smart. And then I had the pretty girls on the cameras. So I had like a professional setup. So I was taking 20% of the money from them and they'd get 80% of the money. So I was trying to motivate them with money, but motivating with money doesn't work for two reasons. The first reason is if a girl has no romantic interest in you, the idea of her making you money off of her tits offends her. Like you're using her tits. It's like grabbing a girl's tits who doesn't like you. Do you understand what I mean? There's something weird about it. They didn't like it. I'd buy a new car and they'd be like, fucking, why is this guy, why is he getting a cut? Even though I was getting a minuscule cut for the amount of work I did for them, I was getting very small from these girls because these are the girls who I didn't know romantic interest in. That was the first thing. So they, they were abrasive. They were idiots. And the second thing is, the man they're sleeping with is always like, hey, why the fuck are you working for this guy? We can do this ourselves. You can do this yourself. Fuck him. He's exploiting you. Because they don't want the fucking girl working for me, right? And what's amazing is every single time a girl quit, because we had a professional setup, because we had expertise, it's like a podcast, bro. You have a podcast. If someone were to go, I could do a podcast, go on then. <laughs> and then you'll see them fail, right? So these girls would be working for me, making 10 grand a month, and they'd be keeping eight grand. I took two grand. They'd quit try and do it with their boyfriend, make one grand a month and then quit. Every single one who stopped working for me ended up failing and begging for her job back. 100% rate, right? So what I started doing is me and the other girls, I started having firing girls parties. Every single time a girl would fire, get fired or quit, we'd have a party. And when you'd have a party about a girl quitting, all the girls would stand around and laugh. Oh, she's going to end up asking for her job back. She doesn't appreciate what Andrew did for her. Ha ha ha, da da da. And then girls didn't want to quit because they knew there'd be a party about them. And they didn't want there to be a party about them. Do you understand? I had girls come to me saying, look, I have to leave. I'm sorry. I really have to leave. Please don't throw a party about Like, Because they were so scared of all the girls who used to know them, like mocking them behind their back. So we had like this group think thing going on. But I wasn't tricking anyone. I was just saying, look, you can make a bunch of money. I never exploited anybody. I never hit a girl. I never hurt nobody. I never, I didn't even have to raise my voice. I was a positively inspirational and motivating person. I was a pimp. I made them feel happy doing what they did. They liked working for me. So that was it as a whole. It was a very happy environment. There was, there was no slavery element. You're not going to get a girl to, to work 12 hours a day, six days a week by being mean to her. 